I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video with the Druid and Daring. First video being the Druid, and uh, somebody had asked me to, hey, do another uh, kind of a game TTPs or a review about the Druid itself and what's so special about it and how to actually utilize it properly. Before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. You see value in the channel. Let us know in the comments. And as always, uh, show your appreciation. And again, thank you guys enough for helping us build a great community and having a blast doing it. So let's get right to it. First game we're in right now is Druid on the western flank. And uh, you can see right now, uh, basic, you know, destroyer gameplay. I've actually found that, you know, not running into the cap right off the bat and just trying to, you know, kill myself right away actually has been paying off a lot in dividends because it's, uh, it's showing slow, methodical, uh, and a, a more educated approach. Uh, rather than just going in guns blazing and risking your ship and so forth, and I find that I've survived a lot more engagements. Literally just being patient and, and you don't need to cap the, the point right off the bat to win the game you really could just survive and maintain the points in the long run and i've seen games turn around where at first the entire team takes over the caps and then all of a sudden uh the game turns around everybody's dead and then you go back and cap all the points and boom you win and that's pretty much the game and i might have to do another video about i think the game needs to be updated with the play style because this whole capture points, hold points, um, is just not engaging anymore because it's like, and I'm going to talk about this later as well in the video and my subsequent video where I think battleship gameplay is dead and uh, may be obsolete because of this style of gameplay and the introduction of new technology. And I think, again, that's the, should be the premise of the video. Um, but right here, you can see right now I'm in the cap. I elected to do it because why not? I mean, I have a Vermont Conqueror, uh, Schlieffen, you know, supporting the back. I don't know what the submarine is doing. Again, I don't like submarines uh, at all. Not to say the, bat the player is bad. I just don't like the submarine and just gameplay in general. It just doesn't fit and belong here. Uh, but anyways, I digress. I'm doing destroyer things. I'm going in and capping, right? RPF is indicating threat. And look, there's a submarine. Okay, what am I supposed to do against that? You know, I have no, again, I, that is another video for another day, but literally no point of submarine gameplay. So he's just going to ping me. And now what? What kind of gameplay is that? I have to rely on other battleships to drop depth charges where I should be able to hydrophone and find this guy in his sonar and you know drive over him depth charge. So I actually decided to do that because I have the threat indicator. Actually, again, I think this is stupid as well. RPF is not showing me the location of the submarine. That's dumb. But only if he's underwater, I can't use this tool that is to my available uh, abilities here. Uh, I got the Marceau. He's off my left, so at least I have a situational awareness, and that's why I like RPF. He's off my left. Submarine's into my right. I avoid the uh, torpedoes there with my hydrophone. Now, my hydrophone should, hydroacoustic should find the submarine, but Wargaming says too powerful. Whatever. All right, here we go. First engagement right off the bat. Um, shooting against the Marceau here, and look at the power of the AP shells. Again, this is what we're supposed to do as a destroyer player, especially Druid. Gunboat DD main literally just blowing up other destroyers, and that's exactly what we're supposed to do. We took a lot of health off him right now, and now we're supposed to cap and then spot, and as well as take on battleships. This is a very, very low on the totem pole shooting battleships. It's just kind of a, hey, that's a nice thing to do. Uh, would you like to do it? Have some fun. You know, kind of that basic gameplay style right there. So th this is just pretty much basic. Just get as much damage as you can. Notice the AP shells are doing great. I love building for the AP damage. It's really, really powerful. We get pinged again. Free pinging from the uh, submarine. I, I wish I had the ping ability. I wish I could, the destroyer had the ability to send out a sonar pulse and figure out where is everybody at. Unfortunately, we don't have that, but whatever. All right, he fires torpedoes. We damage con the, uh, I've seen this is another thing. My damage con last uh, cooldown is 38 seconds. He can ping me every 10 or 14 seconds, whatever, right? Anyways, torpedoes go right by us and we are disengaging. We can also take free damage right here. We'll reveal our position. We got fearless brawler going. I like that. Better reload. Druid's got some incredible guns. We draw fire as well. Again, this is another good thing as a destroyer player to draw fire. And right there we take over, wow, 260,000 potential damage just to that one salvo alone. And boom, he goes down. See, we distracted him so bad that he had to take another incoming fire from Schlieffen off his uh, his flank, and he didn't even realize it was there. He would have rather have, uh, you know, angled towards us a destroyer, but whatever. I digress. We are thinking about chasing destroyer. I got him on RPF of some kind, but again, just watch this engagement here, and you let me know what you're thinking. Like, what am I supposed to do, you know, as a destroyer player to hunt down a submarine? Unfortunately, it's impossible to do anything right there because I have no idea where he's at. So we're going to elect to at least take some chip damage off the St. Vincent. We pop smoke, and I'm going to go undetected at quarter speed. So notice I always wait till I'm approximately around quarter speed down here, and that's when you can actually move and uh, still move and still have the smoke screen while it's puffing out. Once it stops, you got to come to a complete stop and stay in it. 
for the standard smokes, of course. And you notice, again, I'm getting pinged so much, I don't have time to mess around with this. So we're going to actually disengage and see if we can go uh, against this submarine. Now, he outspots me, by the way. Now, I have no damage con here. What am I supposed to do in this situation? Just dodge, right? Okay, I, I shift left and right. Oh, those things just head right to you, the bow. Ooh, I missed one. And here are the other three. And look at the, the, the turning abilities of these bad boys right there. Whoa, look at that. Okay, thank goodness. That is kind of like education right there on dodging. They eventually break the home uh, homing at around 0.2 or 3 kilometers-ish. Again, I don't know the actual parameters of it. it. It seems like it changes with every submarine or ship, whatever. Moving on, I disengage from the submarine altogether. I don't think it's worth it. Okay, what are we supposed to do as an destroyer player now? We're supposed to go cap Bravo, right? That's the next priority, or eliminate anything along the way. So we're going to go ahead and press towards Bravo. Meanwhile, uh, aircraft carrier is coming at us. Look at that. We can do somewhat some kind of damage, but man, these things are super powerful. Angle in, slim profile rockets don't do anything right there, and that's another great um, tactical you know, defensive uh, countermeasure or maneuver to avoid and mitigate as much damage as possible. So we're going to go ahead and push towards Bravo. Look, people still firing us. We've already taken 485. Look, another shot right here. Oh, please don't hit me. Okay, that took a lot of health off. We're now taking 548,000 potential damage right there. Again, you're annoying once you reach that 1 million potential damage mark as a destroyer because that is a lot of damage to be absorbing. You're absorbing literally battleship levels of uh, fire, which is incredible. So right now we're going to go ahead and push into Bravo. We have RPF locating. I have a buddy of mine, Lucian's on my right right there, so good. We've got support. We've got the Fletcher. Okay, let's see if we can eliminate the Fletcher as fast as qu as quickly as possible. Notice he is firing at my Lucian, so it's good. It's good to work in pairs because now he doesn't know who to shoot at. He's got to pick one or the other. And do we eliminate? Yep, there we go. Fletcher goes down. Way to go, Fletcher. Now we pop smoke right now because I always save smoke for literally situations like this where I'm exposed and I need to dissipate my visibility immediately. And then, of course, popping that smoke right off the bat conceals me so I can do what you're seeing right now is just take as much fire as possible onto the Napoli or any kind of threat. Lucian's is running away, of course. We're going to have to help him as much and try to distract this Napoli. He is pushing in. Once I see a ship pushing in around two kilometers plus of my concealment, so if my concealment is 6.5, 8.5-ish, I always add two to it, and I say, hey, I got to start moving because otherwise I'll get spotted immediately. And boom, thank goodness, Lucian torpedoes get him, but we do lose our Lucians at the same time. Rest in peace right there, buddy. You did a great job. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, push into Bravo. Again, why is the Druid so, so good? It's because it just focuses on one thing. The bread and butter is guns, okay? The guns are so powerful, great improved angles, one of the best AP improved angles, I mean, which means that it doesn't matter how much you angle, you got to literally break the angle about 25 degrees or less uh, to my ship, which means you're literally only exposing 25 degrees of your broadside, and that is literally what the threshold is. You can look on their website and the wild stats. This thing, I think the AP angles go all the way up to potentially 76 degrees to get some kind of damage on a uh, destroyer or any kind of ship, which is incredible. The AP alone does some incredible damage right here. Like literally coming out of the barrel at 975 meters per second. I love it. Just shy of a thousand meters per second that the Hiroguma do, does or Kitakate, uh, Kitakaze. Look at the damage, though. 2365. A lot, a lot of good damage coming out of just two uh, sets of guns right there. So I love it a lot. And, of course, we also cap Bravo. And now we're going to go ahead and assist our uh, other teammates over at Charlie. Again, what are we doing? Supporting our destroyers, keeping them alive. I've noticed that if I keep my destroyer alive, most likely we're going to have a probability that's a uh, favor for us to win. And, of course, I'm supporting the push, capping, spotting, and everything that we're supposed to do under the sun. And that's where the warships as a destroyer player. That's why I find it so much more engaging because battleships can only do so much. Cruisers can only do so much, but the destroyer does everything. And everybody's always blaming the destroyer. Hey, why are you dead? We're going to lose game. Or why aren't you spotting? Why aren't you supporting? Why aren't you smoking up? Why aren't you torpedoing? Why don't you do... You're literally doing everything. And I really ap appreciate that because it makes you very, very reliable and also dependent because everybody's looking to you to be the leader. And I like that. I want to have that leader role. I want to take command and just go lead from the front and just lead by example. So right now I see in the Shimanto, we're taking, look at the, the angles. Look how he's angling against us. What It doesn't matter. The shell, if it hits the superstructure of the area of the ship that we need, it's going to do some damage. That uh, really is just annoying. And it really causes the player to, look at there, 474, 237, and destroying a gun of his. I mean, goodness gracious. So not destroying, but damaging. So we're blasting away all the airplanes right there. Pretty awesome. And let's see what else can we do. Um, all right. So this team is pretty much folding right here. Let's see if we can take the Kitakaze out. Get you guys a right there. Oh, man. Look at the guns. I love the fact the guns are so accurate and at long range, so I really enjoy that aspect of this, the uh, Druid. And we're going to pop smoke because we don't want to get revealed. Yeah, and we pretty much do everything right there. Look at that. Three caps. 
pretty much game's over. And look, look, where, look where all their battleships are. You have a St. Vincent in the back here with the J-Line. You have two battleships. Yeah, the GK going back here, running away. Vampire, everybody's running back. Yeah, because they folded, right? And again, I think that's the reason why the the game in itself is just so um, outdated now. I don't think this whole capping spots with a ship that you can only keep for one round uh, and, and you die, game's over, and you have no other impact in the game whatsoever. I think the play model is dead, and it's causing the player base to play a certain way. Uh, for example, sitting in the back, sitting in the J-line, sitting by an island, just, or just literally trolling and, and going in. I've seen a lot of videos talking about guys just... Just either full sending it into a cap and dying right off the bat. Now you just screwed your entire team for the rest of the 20-minute match. Or then all of a sudden you, you don't do anything else to uh, add value. Or, and then now you're sitting in the back with your battleship with uh, 50,000 HP left and not doing anything. You're useless. You're wasting all that HP for what gain? So that was the, uh, the Druid right there. Uh, I'll take a look at, and we're going to take a look at another fun video. Top three in the team right there doing what we did. And look, we didn't do much. We just did a lot of 24,000 damage uh, to airplanes that, and we did a lot of spotting and potential damage. So whatnot. Let's take a look at another video um, that I, I think, especially another British line that destroyers. I do like the um, the British line. All right, so here's another favorite destroyer, British Destroyer line that I really enjoy is the Daring line, Tech Tree. Anybody can grind this. You don't have to do anything cosmic or do you, you know, kind of steal or research bureau things, kind of like the Druid, but really the best, one of the best, I would say, starting lines is the Gearing and the Daring class because it does, they do everything that you would want a Destroyer player to do, uh, especially one that's supposed to be impactful in the game. And as you can see right here, Daring uh, starting, it's a similar hull as the, the Druid that you just saw earlier. Uh, one of my favorite uh, destroyer lines is the Druid, of course, and then the next British line is Daring. So similar like uh, layouts and everything, except there's an extra turret on the back that's 360. So very good, uh, I would say, um, uh, maneuverability and, and weapons employment because I'm not worried about the guns not being able to swing in position on time. So right off the bat here, doing our job. Capping Bravo, again, I know I told you, like, I don't, nowadays, I don't feel like you need to cap a, a spot or a point right off the bat. You can let the enemy have it. You can come back later and get it. I don't think it's a detriment to the game. Uh, so we're going to elect to not actually go into Bravo, let him cap it. Otherwise, we're just out of the game. I notice that if we sit in the cap and not do anything, we're not using our weapons to bear on the enemy. So why do I like Daring so much? It's very maneuverable, very quick acceleration. As you saw there, it has the quick smokes. Right here, as you can see down here, like literally kind of guerrilla warfare, pop the smoke, last a little bit, and then move on. And a great cooldown. It's got Hydro. It only goes out to three kilometers, kind of like the Druid. Has the heals like the Druid. Also, I like that as well. Torpedoes is another bread and butter. 10 kilometers, 62 knots, 7.8 seconds uh, reaction time, but a two-minute reload roughly. The AP is just as good. Good, um, good a, you know, British-style AP, uh, good angles. And, of course, the bread and butter is the HE that starts a lot of fires, and they do very, very well as well. So Daring is a very, very good ship. It's very versatile, very nimble everything you need uh into one small package um and the health is 24,300 similar to yeah i would say better than gearing but a lot better especially even with heals and if you get cunningham as a commander in randoms uh, in rank you can actually if you get two kills you get an extra uh consumable for everything so really awesome there so right off the bat we got rpf located off our right nose here so we got one to two o'clock we have a threat keep our uh, viewpoint right there and our guns facing that way and there we go see uh holland is not suspecting us right there so therefore we got our ap all guns the bear right there three sets of guns shooting ap look at the damage you got right there holland can't stand a chance because look at that his guns are only got two barrels uh small he whatever where firing so so much he or uh, ap right into his, uh, his broadside right there and that is uh, very very powerful taking 11,300 damage on him right there and now we also have we're spotted that's why the quick smokes are very very crucial look everybody's firing at me you can see exclamation points showing red that means i got to do something to change vector or whatever it'll mitigate damage and this is where the heals come in because we're going to take so so much firepower at us we're going to pop smoke break that line of sight detection so that nobody sees where we're at and they still hit us 3,000 damage man he has so much help that i hate that nobody's helping us but guess what we're gonna go ahead and eliminate the first destroyer off the bat right here this is why it's so important to be a good destroyer player to hunt down all the destroyers and kill them because you increase the probability of winning that way so let's go ahead and take them out we switch to he now which is doesn't matter about angles you're gonna just fire as much as you can on them start fires break modules anything you can to get this guy out of the game the dpm on the daring is pretty good i like the fact that you get really quick reloads a lot of firepower down range 
And of course, you're going to just nail a lot of destroyers. But he can't survive it. Boom, he goes down. First kill of the day. Splash one. We also have a Kearsarge airplanes attacking us. There's one threat right there. And then we have another guy firing us from the Fletcher. And then we have another Kearsarge over here on the right. Two aircraft carriers and a Yamato all firing us. Look, at we're up to 337,000 potential damage right there. And that is what you're supposed to do. Draw, fire, and then just create a ruckus. So we're going to launch some preemptive torpedoes. One in front of the Fletcher and maybe one set right here to where he could potentially go. I never aim at the guy. I always go, where is he going to be? Where would I go if I was a destroyer player, right? Would I run away, run towards me? So I'm going to actually think about this. He's probably going to go somewhere behind this island here to retreat. So we're going to go ahead and fire, hopefully fire one more set of uh, torpedoes that way. And we're going to see if we get a lucky shot there. I got another threat right in front of me over here. Um, I'm not really sure what's here yet. Maybe some other destroyer capping Bravo. We're going to go ahead and keep our focus there. We have support at Benson. And let's take a look where these torpedoes go. I'm actually curious. Where does this, I wonder if we can nail a lucky shot here. I remember in the replay that there was a lucky shot somewhere here, and I wonder if I get it. And that's why the, these torpedoes are awesome. I mean, they're there just for deterrence. They don't go out to long range, 10 kilometers, but they're, they're something, right? Uh, but it's just more of a defensive measure. If someone's like a battleship's rushing us, they use single launch torpedoes. You can do spread, you can do uh, single launch, and they're great for just deterring you know, maybe a threat uh, that like a battleship or a cruiser that's pushing you. So hopefully, do we get this? There he goes. Boom. Fletcher goes down. Awesome job. And we also spot Kagero. That's slash two right there off the bat. Now we're switching to AP. Look at the AP. The power of British AP is so devastating, especially if you start showing broadside. And look at that, 2300 right there. And this is exactly why I switched to AP only on the British. And oh, look at that, he goes down. Boom, devastating strike. That's two devastating strikes, ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat. 46,000 damage, three kills in the first seven minutes of the game. And that is the power of what the British style destroyers like to do, especially the Daring class. And we have the heal to recuperate the damage loss from just absorbing that amount of firepower or just making mistakes. That's why I like the heals on the British line so, so much. A dead Daring class and the Druid class, pretty darn awesome. I definitely recommend you guys either grind it out or try them out. They're really, really fun, very versatile, very powerful. Of course, the um, the biggest downside is, uh, you know, really the... Uh, the the druid only has guns so th that is why it's so so difficult um in the fact that you know if you don't have torpedoes it could be a, th a potential threat if someone rushes you um and you know that's why it's so so difficult to make sure that hey if you are going to get rushed make sure you have distance to get out of there or drive out of there um, especially even with the quick popping of the smoke and, uh, you know, quick smokes, uh, the the ability to just run, dip and run and hide and immediately uh, egress the area if you're, you're, you're approaching, um, you know, a threat or danger in area. You don't want to be able to just uh, be stuck there. And then you're like, okay, that's the downside of the druid because if your nose in and you can't escape, that, that means that you have to pop smoke and then you're just going to have to just either duke it out or you're going to have to reverse the whole time. At least with the, the, the new style of gameplay, it's like the Daring, where you're popping smoke, you're always moving, you're running away, and especially the Age of Radar, which you saw right there, got radar. You don't want to get caught just literally sitting in the smoke or just being in a spot where you have no exit strategy. And that's what I've always said. You have to always have an exit strategy in order for the ability for you to uh, like literally save your HP for the long haul of the battle. Because like I said, you need to survive. You don't just get by capping the point right off the bat doesn't win the game. You need to survive the entire duration of the match. And so that you may have to go back and recap those spots that like say a submarine took over at the last minute. So right there. Uh, like I said, very, very cautious about how you're going to, you know, proceed with the British line destroyers because it's very tempting to sit in smoke and just sit there. So right now, the, another bread and butter of the daring is the fire starting capabilities of it. I really do enjoy it right here. You're going to see the amount of gunpower that you're firing right now, shooting and just launching the amount of shells, just landing right into the superstructure. Despite the armor that the, um, you know, the Petro has, it's like 50 mil plating and everything that shatters a lot of the shells. It can't stop the fires though. So fires, I mean, they still burn down just like any other thing. So we're going to pump 2.2 second reload in the guns right here. Fire starting ability is incredible on the, the uh, British style uh, destroyers. And look, we're just going to keep pumping shells no matter where we hit, we start another fire right there. And look, fires do, they don't care about armor. Dude, fires will just burn you down. Slow, slow rolling it. And boom, there it is. Splash four. Oh, we didn't do much damage. Only 59,000 damage right now. And then now we're uh, just literally picking off people one by one. Here's another beautiful site. And this is a destroyer and a cruiser player's wet dream, a broadside battleship where nobody's spotting for him. And look, we can shoot from the comfort of concealment. 
And I don't need Fearless Brawler on the Daring because the guns are already quick reload. And I don't think another, uh, you know, 10% from re exposing my uh, my uh, my ship's vulnerability really is going to pay off anyways because the reloads on these guns are already fast enough. And just look, we're just going to keep launching shells right in the superstructure, trying to start fires, trying to get chip damage. I mean, all the types of, you know, the tools at your disposal are incredibly, incredibly powerful in the dish there. And boom, there it is. Crack and unleash five kills, 67,000 damage. And uh, you know what? That Look at our team. And this is exactly why I think Battleship... Look at this. Cure Sarge. Okay, I want you guys to take a snapshot of this. I'll pause the video. Look at where the battle, enemy Battleship players are at right now. Cure Sarge in the back. Other Cure Sarge die. Yamato in full reverse. Cure Sarge in reverse on the A-line. This is why I'm arguing the fact that a Battleship play is obsolete based on the style of gameplay that Wargaming has, has provided. I mean... This, this idea of capping points and trying to hold them, battleships don't go in and cap points. Battleships don't provide spotting. Battleships don't have radar or consumables that aid the game. And literally, they are just... The old style of gameplay was sit in the back and shoot. Now it's even worse now where people don't want to lose their ship. So because with technology, the amount of firepower put to bear, and look, we're shooting in the blind right here. We're just going to keep aiming at the, uh, the center of the smoke right there, and hopefully we get a just lucky chip shot kill. Do we get it? I'm just randomly firing the smoke here. I have no idea where these shells are going. And boom, look at that lucky shot. You just got to imagine where the ship's at and just aim right there. Boom. Splash six. My gosh. 70,000 damage right there. But, man, the the Daring class, like I said, the, the ships of today, like the Druid, the Daring, Ragnar, Kabarovs, all these ships that are designed to melt down battleships from distance, um, they are literally op making battleships obsolete because, look, uh, here's a clear example of what's happening right here. They're all in the back. And what's leading to that gameplay? Because why? Battleships don't have an, uh, a really motivation to push up. And the old style of gameplay was to snipe from distance like an artillery game. I don't think that's the game anymore. And I think Wargamer really needs to take a look at how the game needs to progress to keep uh, customers returning and playing. So as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. One million credits right there. Two devastating strikes. I haven't seen that in a while. And uh, Kraken Unleashed, of course. Uh, let me guess. Top one? Yep. Top in the team right there in the Daring class. British style destroyer. So, so powerful right there. And of course, look at the amount of damage we did. 70,000 damage total with a lot of torpedoes, fires, floodings, a little AA. We spotted a lot for our team right there. A little bit of potential damage, half a million. Not as good as uh, the other uh, destroyers I've been reviewing, but you got to get up to a million potential. You really want to be annoying, right? Look at this. One, two, three, four destroyers eliminated. So, so powerful, the Daring class. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you like. Like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support at 4,000 subs. We're going to do another premium giveaway. And we can't thank you guys enough for helping us build the channel, as always. So until then, say hi to me if you see me out there. And you guys stay safe. Talk, uh, talk to you soon. Cheers.